You're watching Color 10 News at 10 in high definition. An illegal dump site appears worse tonight than we first exposed the problem last week. Hello again, I'm David Oliver. And I'm Ashley Ketz. It's near the West Bypass at the intersection of Grand and Western. The site was supposed to be cleaned up by this past Monday. Color 10's Lindsay Klein is here with the story new at 10. David Ashley, after visiting the site today, it's clear there have been no cleanup efforts underway. In fact, it looks as though there's actually more junk at the site that wasn't there a week ago and neighbors want it all gone. Have you seen anyone trying to clean anything up at all? No ma'am. I have not seen nothing. While neighbor Virginia Schisler hasn't seen any cleanup efforts underway, it's getting worse. She has seen more people dumping. Sunday. It was Sunday morning and there was a red truck back down on this side of the road and they dumped out a bunch of dirt, a few more rocks. He took off and I would seen him back down there. Passing by this illegal dump yard, you can see everything from litter to trash and cigarette butts to piles of dirt and rocks like this one and neighbors are ready to see it all gone. The landowner has removed some of the trash. Unfortunately, we have new trash that has shown up. Last week, a city worker said legal proceeding would start this week. That has not happened. We will be moving forward with the legal process now of uh, trying to get some remediation work done through the legal means. The trash is starting to spread onto the right of way, which means costs could fall into the city's hands. I even have new fill that's been dumped out there, and it's right against the pavement, which means it's now on the right of way. So now we're on city property. I don't know what all is down there. Virginia says she sees most of the dump dropped at the site at night when no one's around. As far as cleaning it up, I haven't seen anybody down there doing anything to it. Are you surprised? No. And she just hopes the mess is taken care of. We just hope for the best. Sooner than later. I hope they soon get it cleaned up. The city did tell us if the property owner continues to do everything possible to get the site cleaned up, they will present that to the judge for consideration. But a lot of angry neighbors over there are just wanting all of that mess off of the property. Lindsay Klein reporting tonight. Thanks, Lindsay. Jamie Warner is in the weather lab tonight, watching maybe some warmer temperatures just in time for the weekend. Yeah, it's easy to talk about a warm up when we've been as low as we've been. We saw the coldest morning yet this winter. We saw the coldest morning in a couple of years. This morning at 7 degrees here in Springfield, the coldest since February the 11th of 2011. And of course, this comes uh, really at the tail end of a string back in 2011 of, of below zero and single digit days as a result of a lot of snow on the ground. Today is a two year anniversary of that blizzard that hit southwest Missouri uh, back in uh, early February of 2011. No snow really to talk about today except for what was on the ground early and a lot of that's melted off, but plenty of cold to go around and that snow helping out and making it as cold as it got last night. The coldest reading that I could find was three and Fort Leonard Wood. This afternoon we did manage to make it above freezing in Springfield, but since have dropped back below 27 right now. Skies have cleared out for a time, but I think more clouds will come in. We'll start tomorrow off with mostly cloudy skies, but the sun will return along with warmer weather. Should make it into the mid-40s tomorrow afternoon. New at 10 tonight, make sure your Super Bowl celebration includes a designated driver. Springfield police are telling us that they're going to be planning to have extra officers out working DWI enforcement. A lot of times it's a big night for people to get out and drive drunk and we want to be out there to, to prevent something major from happening. And the National Highway Safety Administration says on Super Bowl Sunday in 2010, 40% of fatal crashes were connected to drunk driving. Also tonight, new at 10, Color 10 is campaigning to help keep you and your family safe. Our program is called the No Text Zone. Aaron Nolan is live right now to tell you how one local school is aiming to stop the texting and driving problem, Aaron. Yeah, you know, actually, David, texting is a uh, part of technology that's not going away anytime soon, and it's really popular among that younger generation. And unfortunately, when you've got texting and you've got cars, you've got a dangerous trend. But Nixa High School is hoping to stop this habit before it even starts. Cars and phones, messages while traveling, two things that simply don't mix, and the stats are staggering. In the Show Me State for 2011, 
39,209 accidents caused by inattention. Nationally, 3,331 people died in car crashes involving distracted drivers. And even with those numbers, 77% of young adults are somewhat confident they can safely text and drive. A trend Nixa High School is focused on stopping. It's a distraction. We want to do a lot better than what we are right now. Through a driver's education course, students are learning more than just blinkers and brakes, but also the tragic possibilities of driving distracted. We try to teach them that put your phone somewhere away where you're not going to be tempted to want to look at it while you're driving. I treat these kids like their sons and daughters. You just hope when they go out there in a the car that what you have have told them that maybe it'll sink in. It's a traveling lesson that seems to be working. It's really surreal to think that for that five seconds anything could happen and that you know you you can't bring those five seconds back so whatever happens in that time you, you just can't. Curbing that constant communication is by no means an easy habit to form. Teenagers love their phones. But these young drivers know it's one that must start right now. It's pretty hard, but I get past it because I know that I don't want to put my life or my friends or family life in danger. A lesson that is shifting a younger generation's focus to help stop a deadly problem. We have uh, started something called the No Text Zone on our website, and we want you to get involved. We're really committed to trying to stop texting and driving. Here's what we want you to do. Go to our website, OzarksFirst.com, and take the pledge. In fact, get all your friends and family to take the pledge, because actually, the one thing we want to see happen is get these things out of your hands when you get behind the wheel. Let's head back in the studio to you. All right, thank you. Aaron Nolan reporting tonight. Autopsies maybe or performed tomorrow may now reveal how a husband and wife were murdered. Two teen boys are suspected of killing Paul and Margaret Brooks last night on Trace Hollow Road in Stone County. The Michigan couple have been living at a family member's lake house. The sheriff says those teens were in an empty lake house next door after they ran away from a nearby boys ranch. Investigators credit a neighbor for stopping the suspects before they could get away. The neighbor had noticed some suspicious activity at the residence and confronted the male subjects. He held them at gunpoint until the deputies arrived on scene. The suspects ages 15 and 16 are in juvenile custody. And that boys ranch where the suspects ran away is called Lives Under Construction. The board of directors released a statement saying our thoughts and prayers are with the family of the victims. The ranch has been in operation for 30 years and has had more than 350 boys go through the program. We also have right now some new information about a house fire that killed a four-year-old boy. A memorial service will be held tomorrow for Caden Dotson. He died Tuesday when his family's home burned down on Highway JJ, seven miles southeast of Niangua. Investigators say the fire was likely accidental. Everyone else got out of the house okay. Coming up Sunday on Color 10, we begin a series of stories dedicated to the struggles veterans face after war. The danger of war and the pain of missing family may be gone, but as we found out, veterans deal with a different kind of struggle when they return from combat. It hurts to wake up every day. You know, I don't sleep at night. I wake up in cold sweats and I don't know why because I can't remember what I had a dream about. Um, Life's hard. I check patients. Join us Sunday after the Super Bowl as we take a deeper look at the invisible wounds of war and a new push to help servicemen and women get the help they need. A Missouri waitress was fired for posting a picture online of a customer's receipt. And now that customer is the one apologizing. I'm like, hey, uh, I didn't want, <sighs> I didn't want this to happen. The message written on the Applebee's receipt that started the controversy and what the customer plans to do about it now. And if you haven't already found Color 10 on Facebook, here's how you can do that. Look for the Facebook icon on OzarksFirst.com and like our page.
New at 10, a handwritten note on a restaurant receipt went viral and cost a Missouri waitress her job. Yeah, Paul Shankman sat down with the woman whose words started this chain of events. So I'm looking at my bill and it was like 18% gratuity. And I was like, oh man, just, just, I just said it out my mouth. I give God 10, why should I give you 18? Had she only said that to herself, nothing would have come of it. But a Lois Bell, a self-proclaimed minister, posed that philosophical question on a credit card receipt at the Applebee's on South Kings Highway after learning an 18% gratuity was automatically added to her party's bills because they were a group of 10. Her Jeremiah had been posted on the internet site Reddit, where a lot of people read it, setting off a web debate of biblical proportions, all of which raises another philosophical question. What was she thinking? Just dumb. It was dumb of me. And I can say that because I take responsibilities for all of my actions. Bell says despite her snarky comment, she did pay the automatic $6 tip. So who posted the receipt? Well, it turns out it was waitress Chelsea Welch, a friend of the waitress who served the minister's table. I took a picture of the note because I thought it was comically immature. I, I thought it was humorously just silly. The fact that someone would not only refuse to tip, not only make themselves out to, you know, kind of be a jerk, but also play the religion card as an excuse. When the minister alerted Applebee's to the internet posting, Welch was fired. I told the man, I'm like, hey, uh, I didn't want I didn't want this to happen. I just want you to, you to know that this may be happening at your your store. Bell's congregation is a downtown storefront church called Truth in the Word Deliverance Ministries, where Sunday she plans to deliver a sermon about forgiveness and redemption. Are you sorry that the that this became a big deal, or no, are you sorry, sorry that you wrote it? I'm sorry that I wrote it. By the way, Applebee's tells us it fired the waitress for violating the guest's right to privacy. And time now to check back in with Jamie Warner on this slight weekend warm-up in the Ozarks. Yeah, it's a small warm-up, but we'll take what we can get, right? I mean, temperatures today just barely above the freezing mark for a high. Tomorrow we'll make it into the 40s and next week 50s. So, yeah, things are looking up temperature-wise. Is there any rain or snow in the forecast? We'll take a look at a closer inspection of that uh, and the chances thereof coming up.
And now weather with Color 10 News Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. All right, one month in, we've got 11 more months to go in 2013. Let's see how January, though, shaped up. And when we take a look at January as a whole, the 1st through the 30, 31st, it's like a mountain range. You've got all these peaks and valleys, and, and that was really the month. You know, temperatures took these wild swings from sometimes one week to the next, other times one day to the next, and we had several major peaks of warmth and also several dips of uh, fairly cold weather here in the Ozarks. I think the most dramatic day was probably back, uh, this was around uh, about a week ago when we saw a high of 34 one day, 57 the next, and then 34 the next day. Of course, early this week, on on Monday, we had that record high of 74. Since then, temperatures have dropped up, dropped off dramatically yet again with highs uh, yesterday only in the upper 30s. Uh, when you take a look at this, though, you, you think, well, we must have been around normal or maybe even below normal, but that wasn't the case. Temperatures actually averaged over four degrees above normal for the month of January. January. So despite some dramatic cool downs, overall, the warmth outweighed the cold. Uh, another hallmark of the month of January was the above normal precipitation, which was a nice shift in the trend uh, from below normal precipitation that we'd seen a couple of months before uh, to actually seeing over half an inch above normal uh, precipitation uh, during this past month. For today, we saw a high of 33, so here we are, cold weather to start off the month of February. The average high is 45. Temperatures outside right now are in the 20s. They're not going to go a whole lot lower. We've got this blanket of clouds at least broken clouds in the area. That's helping to keep temperatures up along with winds out of the south. The core of the Arctic air is now shifting east away from the Ozarks across the Great Lakes and into the northeastern U.S. Here's that cloud cover that I was talking about. Notice there's some blue on the map, right? Snow. Well, yeah, it's real, but it's not making it all the way to the ground. There's some very dry air in place near the surface, so as the snow falls out of the clouds through that dry air, it evaporates. Here's a little clear slot in the clouds. This is helping to allow those temperatures to drop now into the 20s, but more cloud cover will roll in later on tonight. We're going to start tomorrow off, I think, with mostly cloudy skies. A system will be moving through in the morning, and there will be a slight chance for maybe a flurry as it makes its way through. I think by lunchtime, though, the clouds are on the way out, and Saturday afternoon actually should be pretty nice. Saturday night and Sunday look mainly clear. So this weekend, we should see a fair amount in the way of sunshine. Temperatures seasonably chilly uh, for this time of the year. As far as Groundhog Day is concerned, that's tomorrow. Remember, big big uh, holiday for the weather folks. Uh, looks like we'll start the day off with clouds. There's a pretty good chance that the Groundhog, at least here in the Ozarks, won't see a shadow, and that would mean an end to winter. But Mother Nature probably has something else. I'm sure we have more shots of cold coming, although the next seven days actually look relatively mild. Uh, 25 overnight tonight for the low with uh, mostly cloudy skies continuing. 44 tomorrow. Look for skies to clear out by lunchtime. Uh, temperatures actually making up to maybe 50 across northern Arkansas. Mid 40s again on Sunday with sunny skies. Low 50s on Monday. A chance for showers south of Springfield. Sunshine on Tuesday with a high in the low 50s. And it looks like a better chance for showers with another system coming in later next week. Looks pretty nice compared yeah. to what we had this morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and no 70 degree reading to oh, start yeah. off Saturday, certainly. All right. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. The Missouri State Lady Bears tipped off a four-game homestand tonight. Dan Lucy has highlights of that, plus a live report from the Super Bowl next.
all the money in this town. Uh, I don't know. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Hey, John, can you hear me? Yeah, is this Dan? Yeah, Dan in Springfield. How you doing, buddy? What's going on, man? Hey, same thing we did at six, um, and I'm going to try to ask you about the, your pick at the at the end of this. And uh, it's our last, it's my last go before the game. So thanks for all the fun this week, man. No problem. Enjoyed it as always, and uh, I, I may be doing this next year. We'll see. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, if the Kansas City Chiefs are there, you can look for me. No, no. <laughs> we'll see hey, what happens. Dan. Quit laughing. Uh, I heard that. up in December. <laughs> <laughs> quit laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> we'll see what happens. You may be doing this at MetLife Stadium in the in the. Oh no 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 no. Uh-uh. I'm waiting for it to go to, to like that. Maybe the one. I want San Diego or L.A. No, those stadiums are dumps. <laughs> San Diego's awful. Yeah, but the weather's nice. Right? No, I know, I know. I'm with you there. Or, or Glendale. You know, Glendale's nice. There you go. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, that's a good one. I think I'm going to have you and Drew Ammon do it next year. <laughs> Drew and I do stuff all the time with each other, man. We, we're in the same conference, so we, we swap stuff all the time. What's the barbecue? Oh, I know. He's a good guy. He's great. I sent stuff to Jason today in Terre Haute, so uh, he's cool, too. He's, he's a good man. 30 seconds. Ah, here we all go. Right. I heard that. The Chevy Dealer Sports Report with Dan Lucy. Super Bowl 47 is just two days away. Fans are starting to pour into the Crescent City for the big game. John Kutchko has been in New Orleans all week for us covering the Super Bowl and joins us again live. And John, it's pretty safe to say that these two coaches are quite familiar with each other. It sure is, Dan. Great once again to be with you on this fine Friday night in the Big Easy. Yeah, you know, Fridays are saved for the head coaches. That's when they hold their final news conferences before Sunday's kickoff. And usually those news conferences are in separate settings, but not today. For the first time ever, the NFL had these coaches sit side by side. A family affair for Jim and John Harbaugh. We are fiercely loyal, there's no doubt. I think we'd all, we'd, all, we'd all say that, you know, not just of one another, and we always have been. You know, that's, that's definitely not ever going to change. We will continue to be fiercely loyal and protective of one another. You know, thinking about the most exciting thing, and that, that ball, uh, when that ball is kicked off on Sunday for the game. And uh, we understand it will be a great challenge. It will be a great task uh, in that uh, if we were, were to win this game, uh, it will be a well earned. You always try to get great coaches and there's none better than Jim Harbaugh and I mean that seriously. There's no better coach in the National Football League than this guy sitting right here. And just to add more intrigue to this already compelling story, Jim Harbaugh's son Jay is an assistant on John Harbaugh's Raven staff. Quite a story going into Super Bowl Sunday. Dan? All right, thanks a lot, Dan. Hey, first of all, we've had you all week and who do you think is going to win? Jim with the Niners or John with the Ravens? Jim with the Niners, I say 28-24, San Francisco wins it. And two years ago, I called the Packers score to the point. So give me a little credit there. <laughs> All right, I'm getting my wallet out and going to the, uh, never mind. All right, thanks a lot, John. I appreciate no, it. Don't do that. Take care. Now, the Missouri State Lady Bears tipped off a four-game homestand tonight against Indiana State, an opportunity for the Lady Bears to get back into the Valley women's race. The team tipped off play two and five in the conference. Lady Bears have won nine straight against Indiana State. Missouri State getting the ball to Whitney Eady, top of the arc for the three, and the Lady Bears were up seven to four. Then, Missouri State with the fast break to Nijay Gaines. She gets the layup. Lady Bears up by six. But Indiana State would start to heat up from the outside. Anna Munn in the corner for the three. It's a two-point game. Hannah Wilkerson would bank in this deep three off the glass to make it 2018 Lady Bears. Indiana State goes on a late first half run to break to Taylor Whiteley. She gets the hoop and the harm 34-30 Sycamores. Check this out. Wilkerson off the back of the Sycamore player and for the basket they were, they were down by three. That's not fair. Sycamores crashing the boards. First shot off the mark. Munn though there for the board and the basket. Indiana State was up seven at halftime. Lady Bears would storm back. Wilkerson 
with this basket right here, ties the game up at 56. Indiana State bounces back. Munn, again, she scores a career-high 27 points tonight. Less than a minute left in the game. Lady Bears' Carly Buer with the basket. Missouri State is down just two. Lady Bears with a chance here, but the pass inside batted away. Indiana State beats the Lady Bears 71-67. We're just, we're, we're still putting the pieces together. Um, I think we're fine. We have a great team. Um, back to back against Illinois State um, would be great, especially on halting weekend. And uh, we definitely need to win. The Drury Athletic Department unveiled a new funding drive this afternoon, and Panther baseball coach Mark Stratton has been put in charge of it. Drury competes in 17 different sports at the NCAA Division II level, and this new Drury Athletic Fund will help provide money for various needs, from scholarships to coaches' salaries to helping fund non-conference trips. The university announced four major gifts today to help seed this fund, the biggest a $1 million donation from Larry O'Reilly. We expect all of our teams to be not just competitive, but to you know uh, pursue a GLBC championship. And uh, and for us to do that, we've, we're going to have to do certain things. We're going to have to improve our scheduling and where we're playing. And and to do that, that all takes funds, and you, you need revenue. And I'm hoping that we can provide that through the uh, Athletic Foundation. Good news for Drury Athletics there, and the Drury Lady Panthers and the Panthers at home tomorrow as well at the O'Reilly Center. Uh, the the women and then the men in the afternoon. They're going to try to get as many people in. Over flow the O uh, for the game against Rockers. The men from Missouri State play Evansville tomorrow at 2 in the afternoon. So lots of basketball in the area. Got to get out there. We heard John Kutchko's Super Bowl prediction. That's what right. do you say? I agree with him. I think that the agree? San Francisco 49ers are going are to win that game. We'll see what happens there. OSS is going to have a, a show 9.30 on KOZL, right. followed by another show. Uh, the countdown show on Color 10 is going to be at 6.30 tomorrow. Then, of course, the game is right here. 5.30 is the kickoff. Pregame starts, I think, at 9 in the morning. I, I, said, eight, it, I, said, I think at 5, I said the pregame. <laughs> game started three weeks ago. I think, well, so, yeah, yeah, sure it did. Yeah, yeah it did. Of course. It started Sorry. last year. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Well, you may have noticed people wearing red today. Yeah, we're even doing it, too. The proven success of the Go Red for Women campaign after this. Here are tonight's winning lottery numbers. Color 10 News will continue in a moment.
Women are being encouraged to go red today. And the American Heart Association is celebrating 10 years of the campaign to educate people about heart disease. It's the number one killer of women. The American Heart Association says the Go Red campaign to raise awareness has saved more than 600,000 lives. And we are certainly proud to be wearing our red today, too, to help save lives as well. And we're all about, all about the campaign Thanks, here at College yes. 10. <laughs> Thank you for watching and making us your choice for news, weather, and sports. And we hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.